Welcome to Finance with Avery. In this video, I want to give an overview of Target's second quarter earnings for 2023 because there's a lot in the earnings right there to digest. There's some bright spots and then there's a lot of down spots, a lot of gloomy areas right there with Target. And Target stock, ticker symbol TGT, popped after earnings were announced. You see right here, nice pop. I mean, it was like, you know, around, you know, 130. It's been around 130s for a while and dipped underneath 130 yesterday. It was like 120 something. And I was thinking about actually buying more. I'll tell you about my position a little bit, but it jumped right up there. You know, it was like a 10% jump, 9% jump all the way up to 130, you know, high, 133, 130 is area right there. And then as people started, you know, digesting the news and the guidance and the numbers, the stock start falling, not to the levels it was at yesterday at least, but now it's still right underneath that 130 mark. I mean, and it's been hanging out there. You see the past three months, look at it, pretty much flat. I mean, yeah, there's a little, little up moments. It's like, oh, you know, and down. Just around that 130, 132, 133. Then it has those moments where it dips below 130 for a little while. And you see year to date, the stock is down 13% past three months down around 17 percent past month you know pretty much flat so you know around down about one percent for a whole year down about 28 percent three years the stock is down about five around five percent five year and then stock is up that long i mean yeah 48 percent up for five years if you bought it back here you know somewhere it just held on you're still up even with how bad its stock has been hit so yeah target earning second quarter Let's jump to it here. The EPS was expected at $1.42 per share, and they reported $1.80. So that was a 26.85% surprise to the upside right there. However, they lost on the revenue. They expected to have $25.23 billion in revenue, and they reported $24.77 billion. So not huge, you know, or anything, but it wasn't, it was a miss. So, you know, that was around 1.82% right there. And you see they beat previously, and they are definitely making headlines, and a lot of things are pointing to the whole controversy with the culture the pride month and all that you see you know pride backlash hurt target sales they fell for the first time in six years headline right there another headline right here target pride backlash as to sales woes is culture wars rage in corporate america so yeah i'm not going to comment on all of that i i just find it odd when companies are doing so well and they're doing what they do very well and then they start getting into these controversial areas and then you know it's kind of like picking sides and you're not going to make everybody happy you know if you just stay out of it i'm not going to i'm just not going to get into it because i don't want to this channel is not about that. This channel is not political. It's not cultural or inclusive, exclusive, or anything like that. This, this is about the financials. This is about stocks, investings, banking, and all that. So I'm just, I don't want to divide anybody on this channel. I'm not taking a stance to say anything is right and wrong. But so the CEO, Brian Cornell, you know, he said that a negative reaction to the retailer's pride merchandise hurt sales and contributed to the disappointing quarterly results that the company reported Wednesday. And also with the regulation to the pride month and all that stuff, the CEO, he talked about it some on the call and everything. He stated that we'll continue to celebrate pride and other heritage moments, which are just one part of our commitment to support a diverse teams and guests. However, as we navigate an ever changing operating and social environment, we're applying what we've learned to ensure we're staying close to our guests and their expectations of target so it's kind of like one of those like safe kind of you know kind of uh quotes kind of things to say is like yeah we're not going to just totally say no to these people or no to this effort this group or this you know however you want to call it this you know celebration this all this but also we're going to be a little bit more careful about how we do this maybe we're not going to like promote it as much or kind of like some people say shoving it down their throats or being a little bit too provocative with certain things i won't get into all the details of that like i said i'm not going to do that here on this channel but you can look it up all online to see why it was so much backlash like a lot of companies do during prime month so it wasn't just because of a logo change or you know a rainbow flag here or there or something like that and it, no it was it was other things you can look for it online if you want to get more into that so they'll probably like i said they'll still continue to celebrate and do things like that however they'll probably be a little bit more you know cautionary on what kind of materials and items they're selling and who they're hiring to you know for this thing you'll see a bump yeah you get into that if you want to so yeah so that, that's i'm glad he came out and said something about it instead of just skirting around it or something like that so that's good however the cfo chief financial officer stated that to be crystal clear we can't isolate the price impact from the many other factors at play in the quarter he said that on a call with reporters pointing to multiple economic factors including weaker sales of discretionary items and because of inflation which that, that is true right there. I mean, yeah, the, the pride hold, all that controversy definitely hurt their sales. I mean, I'm, there's no doubt about them. People literally stopped shopping at Target because of, I know a few people myself that I'll just, you know, say they stopped shopping there. Like I'll mention something about a sale or something because I, like I said, I just go, I just do my thing. I'm just, I'm not trying to be controversial or support this and I support that, whatever. I'm an owner of Target stock. I'm long Target stock. 
I want to add to my position in these low areas under 130. I've been accumulating around 130. You know, they attribute, you know, some of the issues to, you know, what's going on with that whole controversy. But they also say, you know, hey, they've got inflation they're dealing with. They got the student loan thing coming up, you know, where people are going to be spending less because they got to pay back the student loans. You got gas prices going back up. You know, it's costing me around 50 something dollars a week to fill up. So it's like, you know, so you got all these other things going on in the economy as well. It's not a lot going in Target's favor with that. But let's jump into more of details of the earnings right here, because there is some. Yeah, look at it. You see the negatives across the board right there, except for that EPS, that bright spot right there that they beat. So comparable sales down 5.4% following a positive 2.6% in the second quarter of 2022. You have store comparable sales down 4.3% following a positive 1.3% last year in the second quarter. And then digital sales down 10.5% compared to last year in the second quarter. Of They were up 9% right there. So the thing about digital sales is kind of like... I'm not going to say this is like a false number or anything like that or misreported number. Definitely not anything like that. That 2022 number right there, Target was having some really great momentum and sales from COVID because, you know, a lot of people stand at home, shopping at home, shopping online, you know, drive up service, doing that. And Target was really, you know, doing pretty well in that area right there with the digital sales. So having a year over year comparable to that is kind of hard because we're away from that now people are going back out you know digital you know people are still shopping online for sure and that's still growing overall and you know you still that by amazon and a lot of other online retailers that are focusing on that and target itself as well is focusing on that but compared to last year they're, they're not doing those sales like they were last year when people were more willing or more or less willing to go out and more willing to shop online so yeah down right there 10.5 percent with digital sales however it's still one of those moments it's like are they down because because of how great you know that COVID area was, which is true, or are they down also because people are just shopping at Target less? You know, like if this was going on again, you know, another year with the stay at home and everything, would people just be shopping at Target less because of you know inflation or their prices or whatnot or the controversy and things? You know, who knows? You know, and so Target states that they're focusing more on the fundamentals right there because they can't you know control the outside factors with inflation and student loan forgiveness and things like that. So they're doubled down on their retail fundamentals. They state having items in stock. You know, their inventory showcasing affordability so you know running you know certain kind of sales and things like that and their proximity to their the products and everything in their stores to people because I'll show you later on they're you know talking about opening more stores and you know remodeling stores and things like that so they are working on you know some more of their inside stuff at Target things you don't you kind of notice as a customer but you don't notice completely right there because you just it's just part of you shopping there you know oh that's in stock or oh this sale goes with this and Target Circle and that you know all things like that so and also they stated they made progress in the second quarter including in-stock levels improved from the first quarter, and the inventory levels are now 17% lower than last year, which the inventory was an issue they were having during the COVID area thing. So that was like one of the weak spots in COVID where the stock price started to kind of take a tumble as well because they were having like so much inventory once things were like switching from like the post the COVID area to post COVID and things like that when people, you know, started to go out more and they were shopping for different things and Target didn't have what they had in stock. And then Target had so much of this other inventory that they built up for the, I'll just say COVID area area they had so much you know inventory built up from that and then they couldn't get rid of that inventory because people weren't buying those things anymore you know when they weren't buying all that stay-at-home type of uh, material and items before at, like they were before so they had an issue with so much inventory right there so they're you know cutting down on that right there so that that's something they say they're working on right there with the inventory so they got that down so drive up they say grew seven percent as return scaled nationwide and starbucks rolls out in the third quarter so they're going to have drive up service with starbucks because you, if you notice if you shop that target you see a lot of targets with starbucks inside of them and so they're going to have it where starbucks will be basically delivering out to your car like the drive-up service you can you know you can order you know your or, your order online from target you know freezer items cold items fresh items clothes houseware you know electronics things like that you can order online and just drive up pull up to one of the spots you know you got the app you tell them you're on your way and it's a really smooth service it works very well i've used it several times and you know and i've gone inside and did the pickup as well that works very well too when it's you know not super busy you know, have to stand in line but so the drive up tell them you're on your way you then you when you get there you know you you choose what parking spot you're at you put in that number you know one two five whatever you're at and short amount of time after that sometimes they're already almost out there it seems like <laughs> so they're pretty efficient where i live in this um, um drive up service and everything so they're going to have it where they're going to have the drive up service with starbucks so you know hey while you're here have your matcha latte your cold brew whatever so so that's you know that might be a bright spot for them for sure and bright spot for starbucks as well because starbucks isn't losing anything from that really it's just like hey 
it's a convenience thing. Starbucks is being even more convenient. You know, Starbucks is trying to be convenient from being in certain locations and drive through and have their mobile app and their mobile service and everything, all that going on. But now they have this we're going on with Target. They talk about more of their back to school um, numbers and everything and the earnings right here. This is just kind of like an infographic right here talking about a few things, 20% off teacher and college student appreciation events are back and things like that. And an increase in their loyalty members with Target Circle Week event going on there. But let's jump to some of the kind of other guidance, some of the forward things going on here. So they stated they're investing in long-term growth and profitability. They stated they're on track to invest $4 billion to $5 billion in the business this year through new and remodeled stores, supply chain and digital capabilities and more. So now open, they said 11 of the 20 new stores planned in 2023 are open. So they've opened 11 new stores of the 20 that they planned for this year. And they stated that 51 of the 175 stores undergoing full remodels or other enhancements in 2023 are guest ready. So they've remodeled 51 of those 175 stores that are planned for these enhancements right there and that they're ready and people are shopping in them and everything. They also stated they have a Miami sortation center to tenth in their supply chain. And they also stated the opening of their first last mile delivery extension facility, which is in Smyrna, Georgia. So, you know, some they're focusing on building up their target. You have to do this when you want long term you know, sustainability, profitability, and growth. You know, even in these weak moments, you have to keep focusing on yourself and building that brand and everything like that. Target is a dividend king. You know, they've increased their dividend over 50 years consecutively. And so that's in good times and bad times and things like that. And so that's another reason why I'm long Target is because they've been through the, the grime, the dirt of economics, you know, recessions and house prices doing this and, you know, college, you know, student loans, that and all, and all that kind of stuff. They've been through that throughout their years and they've handled it you know they definitely had weak spots and they definitely have a weak spot going on now and that's another area right here that target is definitely taking a hit on and that is theft they are losing millions of dollars due to thefts in their stores right here and they stated and the ceo stated that thefts involving violence or threats of violence have more than doubled this year so far so this is like pretty major for them like and the ceo stated that their team continues to face an unacceptable amount of retail theft and organized retail crime yeah organized retail crime they've used that term before too it's like the mafia or something going on right here. He said that during the first five months of this year, their store saw a 120% increase in theft incidents involving violence or threats of violence. And so this is why I was stating before that this has been an ongoing issue because back in May of this year, their CEO warned investors that Target's losses from shrink, which is, you know, inventory shrinkage and everything, which includes theft, could grow by 500 million over last year's level, reaching as high as 1.2 billion. And with the closing of the store, they have not indicated any plans to close any of its 2000 in U.S. stores due to theft right there, but they did not rule it out as a possibility if safety problems could continue to become unmanageable because I know Walmart for sure they would they've done that before like there's a Walmart in my area not my where I live but like in the city where I live where they were having you know issues with theft for sure they were having issues with theft that's what I've heard you know from the news and everything and they closed that store and that store was open like it was only open for like a year, year and a half or something like that. Like this was a new store right here. It's one of those like neighborhood Walmarts or something, you know, and I've never been into it, but like, I know I drove by and I was like, what? They already closed that. And then I saw the news and I talked to some people about it and they're like, yeah, they had an issue with theft. And they said, no, not in this neighborhood. And they, sh they closed it down. So I mean, Target may have to look at doing something like that because I know Walmart for sure has personally, I've seen it. So yeah, that is definitely an issue right there with target and it's and also another thing with their stock price their guidance they have lowered their guidance right here so the company said their profit rise reflected a meaningful recover from last year's inventory actions but it lowered its full year sales guidance to reflect recent trends and said it now expects them to be down in the mid single digits for the rest of the year the reason why you know they, they expect the sales guidance to be in that single digit range is because of the high interest rates which makes credit cards more expensive to use you know you're going to have a higher rate interest rate on that car people want to use it less you know 20 something percent interest and all that high teens and things like that that adds up you know people are going to cut back and they see that interest they're paying more interest than they are of cost of the goods that they're paying for almost in some senses if you don't pay off that card every month so you have that going on you have higher prices of food that continue to rise inflation they stated it's putting a strain on customers and that the change so that's why they cut that profit outlook for the year right there it expects the sales will decline for the remainder of the year right there so it lowered that forecast and also cited like i was talking about that student loan for forgiveness and moratorium and um that's yeah so that is multiple things going against target right now it, it's it's they're they're on the defense right now with all these things coming at different angles from inflation interest rates student loan the controversy with the pride my things theft so it's yeah they, if they can survive and overcome this it should hopefully 
be a nice reflection in their stock price right there. They did have that bright spot right there. It's noted with profit that came in above expectations right there. And that was also with help of them being more efficient and bringing their inventories down closer right there. Like I was talking about earlier in the infographic, it down 17%. And then the CEO stated that part of the reason why they're they're having issues with you know their sales and revenue is because people are going out more he said he said that guests are going out to concerts they're going to movies they've seen barbie so they're spending more on events you know those kind of moments and stated that they're shopping less they're spending more carefully with discretionary items and goods so he, that's what the ceo has stated right there you know and and also in this article right here is about how home depot stated they had their earnings as well recently and they stated that sales continue to decline after surging recent years because that's a lot of things they've a lot of these retailers had some great you know moments you know home depot and lowe's you know they had a lot of people at home you know they weren't selling their home they weren't going out as much so they worked on improving different areas of their home whether it be the patio or the kitchen or the bathroom they were spending money improving their home because they were there more they're seeing things like hey maybe i should fix that you know <laughs> maybe I should, you know i'm really hanging out at home more you know i, I want to make this place a little bit nicer so yeah to, at home depot and lowe's that reflected in their sales and their earnings they did have some really great earnings right there in those some certain quarters but now things are starting to kind of like okay people are working they're going out more and also inflation and interest rates and all that's affecting spending much maybe oh maybe put that project off again you know maybe you're not gonna go spend on that oh, i got enough clothes you know so that is what is happening right there with the economy that's affecting target and all the other things that are affecting target for sure when comparing it to target to walmart they're more vulnerable to than walmart because more than 50 percent of target sales come from discretionary items such as you know toys clothes fashion electronics gadgets things like that whereas walmart a lot of their sales and revenue comes from food and that's one area that people are still you know that yeah they're shopping a little bit less they're being a little more caution you know in certain areas of food maybe not buying as many snacks as before but that's something that's hard to just say like you know i'm not gonna buy any food you know <laughs> ah, we're skipping groceries this month you know no so yeah target that's what walmart is doing a little bit better right there because a lot of their sales come from that area right there whereas target does not i, I thought that target should focus more on having more super target stores and building out that grocery more because i like super target stores personally i think and i do some of my grocery shopping at target but i probably would do even more if they had a super target closer to me pretty much so it's just something, you know, that I think they should definitely do with their remodels. Maybe, you know, that'll be something in the future. Maybe they'll look at back at this and go, oh, yeah, we should focus more on food. So we have, you know, different areas for people to shop at so we can weather these economic storms a little bit better in the future. All right. So, yeah, that is it with the video right there. Went on a little bit longer than I thought it would. At first, I was like, I should just make a shorts about this earnings. And I was like, I got to talk a little bit more about this. So, yeah, that is it with the video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Take care.